Hey guys, I'm Bobby with We Do Boat. I'm here today with Gunther and we're gonna talk about what we like to call the three F. And those are your fluids, your filters, and fashion. So Gunther, why don't you tell us what fluids we're, we're gonna be using to run this We Do Boat. Today we're gonna be using diesel fuel, hydraulic fluid, engine oil, engine coolant, and grease. Right on, okay, cool. So let's take it with the, the first fluid, which is gonna be fuel. In this case, diesel fuel. So the diesel fuel fill is located on the port deck about midship, as you see right here, and there's a label that reminds us to use diesel fuel only. Now, it's really important that when we're running fuel in this boat, we're always running it from a trusted source. So if you don't have the ability to um, get your fuel from a diesel station or a gas station every time, make sure that if you're using some sort of a jerry can, that you're filtering it and you're ensuring there's no water or any particulates in there that can contaminate our system. That is one of the biggest problems that you'll find with uh, uh, any machine is contaminated fuel. So it's really important that we use this key that you're provided with to open the fuel fill. Set the cap off to the side. As you'll see, there's a little chain that will uh, help keep you from losing it. You pour your fuel in, and when you're done filling, you wanna make sure that A, your O-ring is here intact, in good shape, and is free and clear of any debris. And when we put it back in, make sure we, we tighten it, finger tight, and then once again, we're gonna use that key provided to tighten it all the way, make sure we have a nice, tight seal. The last thing we wanna do is compromise our fuel system by having water end up in our fuel. The next fluid we're gonna talk about is our hydraulic fluid. So we're gonna open up the power pack and Gunther's gonna walk you through the location of your hydraulic fluid reservoir and how to add fluid to your WeDo. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do obviously is step up onto the top of your boat and come over to the starboard side where your cutter is behind your power pack. And it's actually located right here on the starboard side on the upper part of your power pack next to your battery. Uh, the way you're gonna to wanna to check for your hydraulic fluid is actually opening up the cap and there's a small shelf on the inside of the reservoir that you're gonna to wanna to be sure that the hydraulic fluid is sitting on that shelf. If you cannot see it sitting on that shelf, then your fluid's too low. Also take note that there is a hydraulic sensor inside of this tank that will shut down your machine if it gets below that shelf. If you also look on the back of the power pack, there's also a window that you cannot currently see at this moment in time, but we will get to that later. Another important thing to check on your power pack of your We Do Boat is actually your radiator overflow tank located on the port side of your power pack just next to your radiator above your engine itself. Um, there is a full line and a minimum low line. You always wanna make sure when the engine is cold and you're filling it, you only bring it up to the full location and no higher than that because as the system builds pressure, you don't want it to actually come out and overflow out onto the power pack onto your boat because hot coolant's not fun. Another crucial fluid that you should always be checking on your motor is your engine oil. Always double check your engine oil dipstick. Make sure it's always at the proper level before and after each and every use. Always double check. The best way to check your oil actually it would be to pull your dipstick out, clean it off with a rag, reinsert it back into the engine dipstick hole, inspect the level at what you see, make sure it's above the number stamped onto the actual oil dipstick or into the middle of the dipstick. Uh, Kubota does recommend that you change your oil every 150 hours, but another good way to check your engine oil is to actually utilize your hands. So if you re-dip the stick back into the engine, and the muscle tissue is on your hands and you wipe the oil on your hands, if it comes off clearly when one wipe, your engine's clean. If it sticks and stays in the cracks and the crevices of your hand, then your engine oil is probably pretty dead and you should probably change it out. The next fluid we're gonna talk about is lubrication or grease. So the cutter itself is actually the only moving part on this boat that has any grease or zerk fittings. There are 14 various grease fittings throughout the cutter and they're basically located on each of the pivoting or moving parts. That being said, the most crucial and important one to grease is located underneath this cover. And as you can see, there's a hole right in the side here, which will reveal a Zerk fitting, which is, like I said, the most important fitting to grease. You're gonna to wanna to grease it daily. After every single use, use grease to fill that and keep it full of grease. So Gunther, can you show us where that's located and how to grease it, please? Of course. So you can actually find your Zerk fitting right here in your inspection hole, right next to your danger sticker. And if you cannot see your Zerk fitting, you may need to just activate your cutter a little bit just to move it so you can get into that because it is on a rotating circle. So you're just gonna put it right in there onto the grease fitting and you're gonna pump it approximately eight times. If you actually look on the back of the cutter, which we'll cut to you in a little bit, 
you can actually see there's a sticker that says pump it eight times. So you're gonna make sure you put eight pumps of grease into that fitting. And that's how you grease your cutter. Another part of the gutter that needs lubricated is the blades. So as you can see here, we remove the sheath and we have a, a really special lubricant we use here. It's basically an open gear and wire rope chain lube. It's really messy stuff, so we wouldn't recommend just spraying it all over the place. But Gunther's gonna show you a really clean and effective method for keeping your cutter lubricated. The way we do like to do this is using just a paint cup or just a piece of plastic container, whatever you got that's clean, and a nice clean paintbrush. So you don't gotta go crazy because most open gear lube is pretty thick stuff and it will give you quite your run for your money. So you're just gonna bring that right over, put the cup right underneath of it, and just grease up right in between the blades of your cutter. Make sure you get underneath also, because it does travel overneath the fixed portion of the blades. And you're just gonna go through that whole thing. Now that we're done greasing our cutter, we're gonna take advantage of using this grease gun while it's out. And it's important to note that a new feature on our 2021 model TC3012 workboats, the lower outdrives are actually affixed with Zerk fittings on the pivot point of your lower outdrive. There's one on each side. So before we put this gun away, let's go ahead and grease up the lower outdrives too. It's important to note that this is a lot easier if you have the drives in the down position. We're gonna keep having fun with F-words. Our second favorite F-word is filters. So Gunther's gonna walk you through the four filters and where they're located throughout your power pack. Gunther? Starting with the first filter, we're gonna start with your diesel fuel filter. That's actually located on the front of your power pack, located between your return manifold and your radiator, sitting right here actually adjacent. Next, we're also gonna walk into your hydraulic filters, which are actually located on the back of the power pack, which we'll get to that in a little bit, along with your engine oil filter, which is also located also on the same side of the, uh, the power pack with your hydraulic. Um, the other thing too that we're gonna go over is your air filter, which is located also back on the front side of your power pack, actually above your diesel fuel filter. We're actually gonna be sharing these part numbers with you here on this video, but keep in mind, you can always visit our website at www.wedoboats.com and we'll have a cart there where you can find all these parts where you can order them directly from us or feel free to source them locally at your, uh, at your convenience. As I'm referring back to, as I stated before, what I feel is the most crucial element in your fuel system is actually your diesel fuel filter and I'm gonna show you how to replace that. Kubota does recommend that you replace this fuel filter every 100 hours. Um, the simplest way to start with this is obviously is probably get up into the machine like I am right now. Go ahead and turn your fuel off and these should only be hand tight, should be no tighter. Go ahead and remove this guy, take him off. Pop your little filter out of there. Pop your new one in. And tighten this bad boy all the way back up. Be sure not to strip it. Tight it till it's hand tight and you can't tighten it by hand anymore. Do not use a tool. Make sure you put the gas back on, uh, fuel, I'm sorry. And Bobby, if you could please go ahead and start the boat for me, or uh, prime it rather. Ignition on. Ignition on. And you're gonna watch it fill. As long as it fills totally up all the way, you're okay. But if you see anything and it's not coming up any higher and you're getting a lot of air in here, um, the most important, the other thing that you could do actually is go ahead and bleed your fuel system with this screw right here. It's the middle Phillips head screw. And while it's priming and pumping, as you can hear, you're gonna just slowly back it out just a little bit at a time. And you're gonna see the air coming out. And once you get no more air and you got straight fluid, go ahead and close that guy back up and you bled your fuel system and you should be good to start. All right, we're gonna take a more in-depth look inside this power pack. To do that, we're actually gonna remove this cowling. It's very simple. Use the number two Phillips head screwdriver to remove the 16 different fasteners that secure this cowling onto the power pack frame. Um, and don't worry, you don't have to go through this length every time you need to service your boat. We're just trying to give you a more insight look at what this looks like. Gunther, can you go ahead and hand that to me, please? Alrighty guys, now that Bobby and I have taken the cowling off the power pack and we're gonna go jumping into talking about your filter some more. Your hydraulic filter, you should always change that at least every 500 hours at a minimum based upon how you, uh, how you use your machine. Um, 
always check your hour gauge, make sure that you're not running over it. It could even potentially, depending on your usage, change it at the end of the year. Going over to the engine side of it, you're gonna talk about your oil filter here. Kubota recommends that we change this every 150 hours or once a year. And also tied down to that is where you can find your oil drain. It's on a nice flexible hose down here. Two 7 8 wrench is all you need to uh, take that cap off and drain your engine oil. And it's a very simple service procedure. And talking about your diesel fuel system again is your electronic fuel pump, which you can find located on the upper, uh, the top side of your power pack in the middle, directly next to your fuel vent, which I'll get to in just a second. On your electronic fuel pump, you've actually got a large sight glass here, which you're able to see if there's any debris, water, algae, dirt, any of that good stuff, which you want to get into the habit of every single day before launch and after when you get done with work. You check this fuel screen to make sure that there is zero contaminants inside of this. It is very important. It's super easy to take off. It's only hand tight. You twist it right off to the left, comes right off, drain your fuel, clean out your filter using some rubbing alcohol, put it back on and you're good to go. Once again, always be sure it is so, so important to make sure that you do not have any contaminants inside of your fuel system. But going back to the fuel vent, as I had mentioned before, if you ever have problems filling up your boat with diesel fuel, be sure to come over and check your vent, which is again located right next to your electronic fuel pump. This is the tail end of the vent where you see the rubber hose connected directly to it. On the front side of it, there's a small lip going around it in a full circle. You might want to be sure that, you know, if you're having an issue filling it, who knows, you could have a bee's nest that try to come up there. You just take a small metal screwdriver or just a pick and just clean out that around on the inside of it. It'll pull that right out of there and you might be able to, uh, your vent might open up and you should be able to fill your boat right back up with no problems. The last and final filter we're going to replace for today is actually your engine air filter, which is located on the front side of your power pack at the top of your engine, just above your diesel fuel filter, about six inches. Uh, to take this off is really simple. So one clamp on the back, one clamp on the back front, pull your top cap off and you have your engine, oh, engine air filter out. This air filter is super clean, brand new. Um, if you ever see any dust, sand, dirt, debris, dead bugs, or whatever creatures crawled in there and decided to make it a home, go ahead and blow them out with some compressed air every 100 hours. We recommend to clean these air filters every 100 hours and replace them yearly. Um, it's very important. If your engine's running rough, feel free. Um, nine times out of 10, it's usually your air filter just clogged up if you did not clean it under your 100 hour mark. Um, to put it back in, it's really simple, open and down, slide it right over to the hole that's matched up into it, put your cap back on, two clips, in the, one, in the, one in the front, one in the back, and she's done. All right, we're going to keep having fun with our three Fs, and we're going to move on to our final and my favorite F word, that's right, fastening. So Gunther, can you tell them what we mean when we say fastening? Going to be talking strictly about our general hardware on our boat, our outdrives, uh, our outdrive hardware connecting our lower outdrives because that is uh, susceptible to harsh vibrations consistently, uh, cow cowling hardware, and our hy hydraulic lines. Okay, so what Gunther's saying is that these boats are constantly being used in harsh environments. We're spending hours and hours on the water and obviously driving many miles to and from our job sites. So there's a lot of vibration that can occur and the lines and the fasteners are susceptible to that vibration. So we're gonna go over some of the more common areas that you wanna focus on, on fastening, which is tightening your fittings and your fasteners. So we're gonna show you, like I said, some of those finer points now. Okay, so talking about fastening and tightening our fittings, some of the most common fittings that are susceptible to loosening from vibration can be found on our lower outdrives here. As you can see, when we build these at the factory, all the lines are marked as they've been torque spec and you'll see a green line that indicates they've been tightened. It's really easy to tighten these if for some reason they become loose. You take your two wrenches, hold one end of the fitting so it stays in place, and then tighten the fitting until those lines are marked back in place again and you know you have a nice tight connection. Another area that you need to watch for on the back of these outdrives is the pivot point between the lower and the upper outdrive. You'll see there's a three quarter inch bolt that goes through and there's a fastener on the back with a cast nut and a cotter pin. If there's ever any play in your lower outdrive, it's easy to remedy that by removing the cotter pin, tightening the cast nut, and reinserting that cotter pin to ensure these are steady and sturdy at all times. There's a lot more to look out for down here too. You'll see we've upgraded these drives and added these new weedless features. It's important to make sure that these fasteners are always tight because if they slide back, they're no longer gonna be performing the job they're intended to do. Some other fasteners that, come, that can become loose from time to time are the fasteners that mount the cowling to the power pack frame. They're little 1024 by one inch machine screws. When we put them on here at the factory, we do use a flat washer and a split lock washer, 
but it's important to always keep our eye on them. And if they ever come loose, be sure to take them out, add a little dab of blue Loctite. Blue Loctite is nice because it's less permanent and it won't let this get stuck in there if you ever do need to take it out for maintenance purposes, but it also helps for anti-vibration purposes. So, like I said, always keep our eyes on all these fasteners and make sure that everything is nice and tight.